waves and climate change has had an impact, but they are there. Villages are still there. I expect to go back to them sometime in the near future after COVID. Um, land purchase in Fiji was another question. What happened with that? Well, yes, Kiribati did buy that land. They purchased it, but the land was settled by people from the settlements. And so while it is purchased by Kiribati, they have not done anything with it. And when it was first purchased, it was said to be for agricultural purposes. That is still up in the air. Yes, it is purchased on paper, but nobody is there from Kiribati living on it right now. Was it the is there a consciousness? Was it the Ekiti best people who lived in the Solomons who settled there, or Solomon Islanders? It was a, a mix. It was a mix of um, migrant workers from a long time ago. Just as Fiji brought over indentured servants, they also brought over, I mean, from India, they also brought over indentured servants from other parts of the Pacific. Right. And that's where they live. Um, consensus of the Kiribati moving forward. There is no consensus. Um, a lot of people will say, God promised never to flood the earth again, um, making a covenant with Noah and showing a rainbow as that covenant, as proof of that covenant. And if you go to Kiribati, every day there's rainbows. <laughs> you know, the the um, the rainbow is a symbol of promise and 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 hope. So I've been the black sheep of my family for a long time because I talk about climate change, and um, that goes right in the face of biblical teachings. Um, then you have other people that say it is happening. My village is gone. Take a look at this. King tides are killing children who can't get fresh water, you know, days after the king tides have come. Um, infrastructure has been destroyed um, because of the king tides, because of uh, hurricanes, because of cyclones. I have never been to Kiribati before. So you have those people on two different sides of the fence arguing whether or not this is real or not whether or not God will keep hold to his promise or not. There is no consensus. What is certain though, is the pride of the Kiribati people. They don't want to go. They've never wanted to go. And they are connected to their land as the land is connected to them. You are born on your island Traditionally, you grow up on that land, you raise your own children on that land, and when you die, you return to that land to join the ancestors, Ikarawa above, to watch over future generations of that land. And my Kiribati family, the older people in my family, say they would rather die in Kiribati than try and go live somewhere else, because that other place is not their land. That is not where they belong, and they belong in their land. So that I definitely do see as a consensus among a lot of, a lot of people. CCL, Citizens Climate Lobby, is an organization here um, that I do partake in. Um, it is a organization that focuses on a kind of carbon fee dividend for the um, restructuring of fossil fuel usage pricing in the United States and, and other countries around the world. Um, have the CCL reps seen the film? Is, did I get that right? Um, okay. Do I have any indications whether our elective representatives have seen the film? I know certain people have seen the film. 
Um, in November, I was meeting with um, Vermont and a Congress, a Congress con Congresswoman from New York City. And um, I gave both of them the film. And the, um, they went on to bigger things over the past, you know, election season. And um, they are aware. The woman from New York City is Puerto Rican. So she definitely relates to the storms and the climate change and the impacts um, that I talk about. Um, has it had an impact? Maybe. Hard to say. Hard to say. I do find that carbon fee and dividend is the driving factor in Citizens Climate Lobby. And like big international meetings, we are always put on the sideline or we are never heard. We are present at United Nations climate change meetings at COPS, but we are always a sideshow. Um, we do get a lot of attention from reporters but we were never in the rooms that make the decisions about our future, uh, speaking our being the Ikirabas future. Um, that's something that I have not seen anything change over the past 20 years. What can US administration, I, the current US administration is challenging. Um, but what can be done for these nations? The most important thing and the thing that I've been fighting for 20 years is just to people know that we exist while we are still on the planet. Um, the IPCC has given us 10 years left. By 2030, they're saying that Kiribati and Marshall Islands, Tokelau, Tuvalu, and um, the Maldives will have a hard time keeping its population and the islands. So I have nine years and change to make as much noise as I can and um, just tell people that we are here. We don't want to go. Um, there is nowhere for us to go because although you might hear climate change refugee thrown around in the media, thrown around in reports, thrown around everywhere, a climate change refugee is not a real thing. When the refugee convention was created right after World War II, they did not take into account the environment. So you can claim asylum for political reasons, for belonging to a special group, but not because your green, your green grass is now brown or not because your ocean is now where you used to live. The ocean is where you used to live. There is no, um, there is no contingency for those of us who are leaving, who are stuck in a vanishing nation. And I think that's, that's a challenge, just trying to get people to realize that Number one, climate change is real. And number two, though we might be the first to disappear, we're definitely not going to be the last. And um, what you do now matters. It matters to everyone. Thank you for your questions. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, did anyone have any additional questions or comments? I see one more question that just popped up. Um, oh, two more. You want to take one of those, Mike? Sure, I see. Um, the biggest thing is make people aware. 
make people aware. Um, I am American, but I was adopted by a family in Kiribati 20 years ago. And I have, you know, I've lived there, I've worked there. Um, I did my first master's, my second master's, my PhD, all in Kiribati to help um, my friends, my family. And um, I was married as well to a Kiribati uh, lady. Um, so I am biologically Mexican, Native American, um, but socially I'm more Ikiribas, um, just in the way that I think. The, the we always comes before the I, and I think the current pandemic really kind of proves the worth of that thinking and, and that believing. Society is greater uh, when we all see ours as a team. Thank you, Mike. I, um, okay, I'm not seeing any more questions yet. Were there any last comments you wanted to make, Mike, or anyone else in the chat before we disconnect the call? I did record this. I know there were a few um, requests for a recording, so I will send that link out if anyone's interested in hearing Mike's response to the questions at a later time, um, or if you want to go back and listen again. Any last comments? Uh, I'd like to ask if Mike has any suggestions about what we can do individually. Keep spreading the word. I mean, we have more power here in the USA with this little thing than we the islands. Um, a lot of people do have access to internet, but they might, is how I've created a social movement on Facebook, on Instagram, on social media. It was actually this, not this phone exactly, but this that helped create Anote's Ark, the movie that you guys just saw. And it was this that helped create um, one word and it's this that helped create you know millennium island another movie that's in production people don't read but they will watch and um they will listen so whatever you can do to share um the story of, of all of these vanishing endangered nations please do please do and um, Carmine, Moss, you guys have been to Kiribati, so you have first-hand experience. I'm seeing uh, more questions about how to share the movie with others. Um, you, could you um, share what platforms it's available um, for purchase? Or maybe, maybe I can even send a link for that one more time really quickly. <laughs> iTunes, All right. Amazon, All right. Right. Okay. Netflix, iTunes, um, Amazon, Amazon Prime. Um, I think that's I think that's it. But a quick okay, Google search of a notice or well, you'll be fine. <laughs> Mike, up. Uh Prior to the the COVID and quarantining and everything, are you aware of any um, spe specific instances of an e kitty best person being sponsored in the United States by an American so that they had a place to live and they could um, get an education and acquire some marketable skills? Is that a program that anyone has tried to do individually or? or um, via the government? It is a program, uh-oh, my sticky tech doesn't fell down. It is a program that the Mormon church has done. Um, it is a program that the East-West Center has done. 
It is a program, obviously, through um, adoption. I know people who have adopted Kiribati children, um, Americans slash Kiribati unification marriages, uh, American, usually it's American men and Kiribati women, but there are Kiribati men and American women. Um, nothing formal. A lot of it is hodgepodge, um, but it does, it does exist. Yes. I was thinking more rather than adopting a child, I was thinking more of like being a sponsor for like the married couple in the film so that they could live here in my house for a year and go get training at a tech school and then they would have a skill that would be marketable. One situation pops up to mind. Um, Jerry Flora, former president of Western Washington University, sponsored two Ikiribas women to learn um, at a community college. Yes, it has happened. Maybe I'll connect with you all offline to learn more about that. Okay, sounds great. I'll put my email in the chat as well. If anyone wants to email me, I am more than happy to uh, have correspondence. Oh, Mike, I have one more question. I saw recently on the Facebook site for Friends of Kitty Best pictures that alleged to be the Osentai Hotel badly damaged and falling down. Is it still there? It is still there. Those are very old pictures. It is up and running. Right now it is quarantine for anyone living with COVID-19. We are fortunate that there are no cases of COVID-19 in Kiribati right now. They have Good. closed down all international flights, all international boats, everything. So they are self-quarantined nation. nation. They, as well as the Marshall Islands, Tokelau, Tuvalu, have um, successfully never had COVID-19. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, everyone, for watching the film. Thank you, everyone, for being able to tell other people about this film and about this situation, um, whoever, whenever, however you can. Thank you. Kambasa and Rapa. Thank you so much, Mike, for joining us. And um, if anybody has any issue accessing his email address in the chat, you can reach out to me. Um, I saw a couple comments about upcoming Interfaith Center events. You can sign up for our mailing list at OxfordInterfaithCenter.org. Um, we do have events coming up pretty much every week. Uh, this coming Friday, we have a virtual coffee hour with one of our board members, Dr. M. Lemdi, giving a talk about Ramadan. Um, and then on the next Sunday, um, the third, we have a talk on peace, religion, and the environment from an Alaskan um, elder indigenous perspective. Um, it's also going to address issues of climate change as well, I suspect. So. Um, we hope that you will continue to join us. We thank you for joining us today and bearing with us through some of the technical difficulties. And we hope, we're glad you were all able to still access the film and rejoin us for the Q&A. Um, so thank you and we hope to see you again soon. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>